All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. And quite the statements coming out ahead of the French Grand Prix with Toto Wolff saying that this season so far has been rather boring because Ferrari and Red Bull are just so much faster than the rest of the teams. Rather ironic, really, given the last eight years of Mercedes dominance. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thanks very much indeed for doing that one. Rocketing towards 5,000 subs. Really appreciate all the support lately. Let's just crack straight on with things. Firstly, some upgrades on the Williams side. First of all, Nicholas Latifi, the upgrade package that came in for Alex Albon a couple of races ago. Now that's going to come to Latifi's car. Seemed to take a bit of time for the Williams to get used to it because Latifi actually outperformed Albon in the rain. At the Silverstone Grand Prix where Gotifi stuck it into Q3 for the first time in his career. That, of course, was without the upgrade, but it does seem to give them a bit more downforce. A bit more porpoising, though, the Williams does seem to suffer with now, but it's also coming to Latifi's car for this weekend's. Alpha Tari also finally bringing something. They looked rather good in Baku, right? I think it was a Gasly came P5 that race. But outside of that, it's been pretty tragic for them. Snow just binned it in the wall a couple of times. That one in Canada was pretty funny. Came out the pits, just slammed it straight into the wall. But yes, as Sonoda says, we've got a major upgrade rather than lots of small ones. It's focused on adding more load as we were quite weak in the medium to high speed corner. So effectively more downforce. And as Gasly says, they are mainly on the aero side, should deliver a real step up in performance. So it is interesting that some teams have gone for big substantial upgrades which kind of have worked but not immediately it tend, the no real team has brought a massive upgrade that's like overnight really worked and fixed their car as part of my suppose you could say the mercedes when they came to spain with that kind of stiffer floor and that seemed to solve their porpoising most teams like especially the midfield teams the likes of aston martin even like williams for example when they've brought big upgrades it hasn't necessarily done anything spectacular immediately it's taken them a few races to tweak them in whereas has to have brought relatively small upgrades minor changes it tends to have worked rather well for them and Mercedes apparently also going down the approach of lots of small tweaks as the season progresses and another one as well this weekend in France speaking of Mercedes this weekend in France Nick De Vries is going to drive instead of Lewis Hamilton not next season or anything but uh, you know in opening practice in free practice one the drivers have to I think there's two mandatory kind of uh, sessions each season where a young driver has to be able to step into the team Nick De Vries is actually older than most of the grids and George Russell. I think Nick DeVries is 27 now, which are kind of interesting. I think, I'm not really sure. I think he's been in Formula E. I think Mercedes are even pulling out of Formula E, so I'm not really sure what his future is. There were some rumours that he might actually be replacing Nicholas Latifi in next season's Williams, but like, um, I'm not really sure that's going to happen anymore, because Logan Sargent's on the radar now, and also you've got the likes of Piastri as well. Don't really know where he's going to be. So yeah, DeVries is going to step in for this free practice session. It has actually been confirmed as well by Mercedes that this was Hamilton's choice, maybe just because around Paul Ricard, it's effectively a test circuit. The runoffs are immense. It's very flat. The runoffs are massive. It's basically a car park. So like, um, you can't really crash it. I mean, you can. You can probably give it a go. But theoretically, you probably can't bit it in the wall. So like, uh, maybe it's a good idea for Hamilton to say, yeah, okay, Nick, you can go around and drive my car for an hour. But like, uh, you know, make sure you don't stick it in a wall. And this gives them the best chance to actually make sure a crash doesn't happen. So Hamilton apparently chose this circuit for where he would be replaced. And Russell's will be some time later in the season when he will step out for another driver. Now, there has been a discussion in the last few weeks from, for example, Fernando Alonso, saying that even with the new rules, it's still kind of boring Formula 1 because the same four drivers, of course, the only four drivers to have won a race so far this season, Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz and Perez, all of Ferrari and the Red Bull, respectively. And while he may be right to a certain degree, that's just kind of how it is, and at least we do have two teams fighting for victories this season, and maybe three soon. We'll see how that goes with Mercedes like compared to previous seasons, where one team has rather dominated. Now, Total Wolf echoes these sentiments in quite a remarkable statement, actually, here, really, just saying that Red Bull and Ferrari's dominance could bore fans. He says, races have less entertainment because there is too much performance gap between teams, which, um, you know, maybe there's a back of his mind that thought here, yeah, you know, when we were winning, it was great fun because I'm part of Mercedes and it was you know, all great, you know, fun and games every single race. But, like, um, there hasn't really been that many years recently where teams have been particularly competitive at the front. This year is actually one of them where, okay, yes, Mercedes might be in a bit of no man's land between the front runners and the midfields, but like, I still think this season has been very entertaining because you've got the Red Bull versus Ferrari battle, you've got the Leclerc versus Ferrari battle itself, like um, there's been a lot going on. So this is the full quote before we dive into it. I think the reason why races have less entertainment is because there is just too much performance gap between the teams, which, um, you know, okay, maybe that's true to an extent. I mean, look, I think it certainly can be true in previous seasons, but most notably, really, when the Mercedes period of dominance has been for 
before, in fairness, the last several years, 2014, 2015, 2016, like, you know, 2020, for example, I get many examples of where the Mercedes car was rather significantly better than the rest of the field. And while he may be correct, this is not exactly a new phenomenon. He says if you have Verstappen disappearing into the distance, two Ferraris being the only entertainment during the race, and then we are in the middle of nowhere in no man's land, then the others are further behind, and then you have the DRS trains that can never make a good sprint race, right? So I think he makes a fair point about the sprint race and the DRS trains and the fact that the sprint races really need to be around circuits that actually suit that possibility. But I think in general, we have had some very entertaining racing this season. Silverstone was the best of it, no doubt, but other races as well. The battle between Verstappen and Leclerc at times has been pretty damn good. Even in around Spain, we saw some great battles as well with drivers making their way back up through the field. So I think it's really rather ironic what Toto is saying here, because the fact of the matter is that yes, this season might be Ferrari versus Red Bull at the front and Mercedes are a little bit in no man's land, but at least there is actually a battle to be had there and two different teams can win races. Like, I'm, I mean, look, some of the previous Mercedes cars, it's just been the two Mercedes drivers that can realistically win. And the funny thing is as well about Mercedes dominance is it's not just that their car was so much better, but it's that their reliability and their engine was just unmatched by anyone. Like, at least Ferrari and Red Bull have had their share this season of reliability issues. You don't know, at least right now, whether the Ferrari, even if it's leading, is going to conk out. Like, um, at any point, Leclerc's engine could just explode, and that's the end of his race, as has happened a couple of times. The same thing earlier this season with Verstappen and the Red Bull. They also had their reliability issues in the first couple of races of the season. So, obviously, Mercedes, for several years, I think I even mentioned this stat yesterday, the last time Hamilton had a mechanical DNF is like five years ago. Like, that's just insane for Mercedes records, and that's the thing. I mean, look at this, for example, I thought was rather interesting. I just found here from F1 charts, the most dominant seasons in F1 history adjusted to the current system, how many points per race. So I guess per race you can put up potentially 43 points, including the 25 for a win, and then 18 for second place. That'd be 43. I guess they might be including like fastest lap points here or whatever. But um, I mean, look, as you can see, so maybe 44 points are up for grabs every single race weekends. Mercedes in 2015 on average put up 37 points. 2016, Mercedes put up 36 points per race weekend. I mean, McLaren in 1988. I mean, look, you can see a lot of blue bars right here of Mercedes dominance. And yes, a couple of years with the Schumacher era in, in Ferrari, 2002-2004, they're there or thereabouts as well. Red Bull in 2011, for example, as well, worthy of note. But like, I'm um, just the difference really between a lot of these recent Mercedes years and some of the historic eras is that, well, definitely something to look at. And what might even be more impressive is maybe this statistic, which is front row lockout conversions into one-two finishes. So how often does a team get a one-two on the grid in terms of qualifying and then convert that into a one-two in the race? And Mercedes have the best five times this has ever happened. They dominate the standings in terms of teams that have ever achieved this with doing this 41 times in their history, which is quite remarkable. I mean, a lot of this is caused by effectively just, well, flawless from the mechanical perspective, which, um, you know, it obviously it creates the meme, right? Lewis Hamilton, it, you know, it's lights out and away we go and Lewis Hamilton wins the whatever Grand Prix because once he was away and gone after the first lap, there was nothing that was ever going to stop him, right? The Mercedes strategy, pit stops were too good in general. The car never broke down. So like you, you could wait the 60 laps and obviously, you know, Hamilton's going to win the race, right? So like it's pretty ironic that Toto would say this now, given what's happened for the last few years. But maybe who knows, Mercedes might get back into the fight and he might have a point about the fact that the season could still yet get more entertaining. Toto Wolf actually does mention that there will be further new developments coming to the car here in France. We've got to keep chasing those final few tents, bringing new developments to the cars, including this weekend in France, going on to say the following, that last weekend was a satisfying result for the team given the situation, saying that, okay, they've scored three podiums in the first seven races and now achieved four in the last four. So definitely good progress. Our understanding of the W13 is growing with every lap and it's encouraging to see that reflected in our development and in our results. While we were quicker in Austria, we still weren't quick enough to challenge the, the front. We need to keep chasing those final few tents and bring new developments, including this weekend in France. Paul Ricard is a very difficult track and challenge. It has smooth tarmac, a wide range of corner types, along with both straights. The aim will be to make further inroads and hopefully be back on the podium. We already looked at this Nick De Vries stuff. So interesting stuff, no doubt. Now, some have probably been taking these ideas a little bit too far. Former world champion Damon Hill mentions that uh, he believes that Mercedes might be able to take a 1-2 finish at the French Grand Prix. This is probably a little bit uh, overrigging it a bit too much. There has been some talk about, okay, maybe this will be Mercedes' most competitive race this season. The track should suit them, but at the same time, we talked about the heat potentially in France this weekend. Like, uh, you know, could it affect their engine more than other engines? It's an interesting discussion that might well be had, but with some further upgrades, they should, in their opinion, probably be closer to the front runners than they have been in quite some time, but I'm not really sure they're expecting to fully catch them until after the summer break when the kind of new technical directive comes into effect. 
like uh, well, Red Bull and Ferrari apparently will no longer be able to use the flexi floor exploit, and that I think is when Mercedes believe they should be back in the fight for victories. But again, Damon Hill reckons they're going to take a one-two finish. Seems unlikely to me. Even Gerhard Berger says, kind of a former Ferrari driver, what is going on with you guys? Are you drinking or what? I wouldn't be surprised if the Mercedes works a little bit better there, but in general, it will still be Red Bull or Ferrari. So yeah, definitely drivers disagreeing on what might happen this weekend. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the track, this is what it looks like. Sector 1, 2 and 3. Rather technical actually, especially in Sector 3. A couple of long straights here. And they actually did confirm the FIA, I believe, today that at the DRS zones it will stay the same from last season. So one DRS zone down at the main straight and then one DRS zone down at the back straight as well. But very much intrigued your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new as always. Take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.